Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real-Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this video we're going to be looking again at the live coding toolkit for Pure Data. Um, if you want to follow along with this video you'll need to download the live coding toolkit. It's available on GitHub at the site that's listed here. Um, when you do download it make sure that um, you go back to PD and the PD preferences under path and make sure that uh, the live coding toolkit is uh, listed in your paths so that uh, PD can find it. Uh, in this video we're going to particularly look at um, an object in there called the random sequence object um, but we'll also be looking at the sampler in some detail as well using sample playback. So that's where we'll start. Um, we we'll use the poly sample, oops, poly sample object, which is a multiple sampler. And I've got a, an audio file, which is called lowperk.wave. Um, now, I need to say a little bit about this file because it's organized in a way that's uh, important for this um, tutorial. You'll see that this file has a series of audio samples. They're sort of drum and percussion samples. Um, and they're evenly spaced throughout the file. There's actually 10 of those samples in this file. They're evenly spaced so that we can um, cut up the, the sample and we know where the starting locations are for each of those samples. So this poly sample will play that back. I'm going to put it through um, again, object, which is part of the live coding toolkit, and an out object with a volume and a reverb amount. These are all stereo objects, so I'm just going to connect up the other channel. And I should be able to play back the entire uh, file by just banging it. And so that's the file played through once. Um, in order to make this sort of a bit of a live coding thing and keep the music going, I'm going to just loop that around. The um, a bang comes out here when this playback is finished and that will re-trigger it. Okay, so whilst that's going on, um, let's have a look at what we need to do to go to the next stage. We will... Um, want to edit the start and end points within the sample playback. So to set this up um, I'm using a bang object which will do a few things. Um, so I don't need it coming out there. It's going to eventually bang the playback um, but we also need it to set the start and end locations. So for the moment I'm going to randomly select those start and end locations. Take a random number of 10, divided by 10, so that we get um, places between 0 and 0.9. That will be our start location. And in addition, we need to specify the end location, which will be the start location plus uh, almost 1.1, rather. So once we do that, uh, we should then be able to sort of randomly uh, position the start locations. So I'll stop that looping back and instead we'll make it loop back here. It's finished, it'll start on the random selection. So now you'll hear that the um, percussion sounds are not being played in order. They're going to be played in a random order. Okay, so that's all going well. Um, so now we're going to get to the random sequence thing. So what I want to move on to is rather than playing them absolutely at random, I want to play them in a random order rather than just totally at random. So we need to set up some infrastructure for that. We need to have a tempo um, box from the live coding toolkit. Um, and important object we're going to use too is a cycle object. Um, we need to 
do this minus one which seems a bit peculiar but in the cycle object um, zero is used as a, a rest and so we have to compensate for that um, the gate object from life coding toolkit um, lets through a certain percentage of um, messages that come to it and in this case we're going to let through 80 percent um, so that will be there and you'll notice that when we um, start this instead it's faster because of the tempo setting we're still triggering things at random um, as they go so now we need to um, set up the random uh, cycle which I'll put in here so the random sequence object generates um, what it says a sequence of random numbers 16 in this case we're going to go from 0 um, to 10 yeah, are going to be the numbers that it will generate that can get passed into just turn the ten away, that will get passed into uh, the cycle object as a list of things to cycle through um, and for the minute we can bang that to generate a new sequence um, but this won't work yet whilst we are still randomly generating stuff down here um, we can make that starting but it won't do anything until instead of this random box I'm going to introduce a, um, a float which will take the number instead from the random sequence now if you listen carefully now you'll hear that we actually have a, a sequence which is repeating rather than just um, randomness uh, occasionally there's things dropped out because of this gate um, another thing which I might introduce at this stage is uh, a little bit of distortion just because this kind of Percussive stuff, I think, sounds uh, kind of good with a little bit of that. So you'll see that at the moment we've got our gain um, at one. I'm going to increase the gain beyond one to compensate for my mixer. And as we do that, if you listen carefully, you'll hear that we've got some clipping, which I'm deliberately introducing using the gain function. All right, so that's our first kind of low percussion drum part. Uh, I'm going to add a second um, drum part, which will use um, almost all of this infrastructure. So I'm going to copy and paste all of that. Um, so a couple of differences. I'm going to, for the second one, just use the normal sample and change the waveform. I've got a similarly organized uh, waveform called high percussion um, and we will send that out um, to the game but before we do that we'll shift the panning uh, around a bit. So I'm connecting that to the game. Um, so we uh, we can start a sequence, generate a sequence for that, and then hook it up to. The okay, so our panning at this stage is in a static location so we're going to introduce um, use the RAND function from the life coding toolkit put that down here and 
and um, that will generate different things and we can trigger that at the same time. If you're listening in stereo, you'll hear now that you've got a wider stereo image for those higher percussion sounds. The other thing we might do while we're here as well is to vary the loudness of each hit. Again, we'll use the RAND function. And send a value of 80 and plus or minus 40, and this is like MIDI velocities. And we can do that also over here for the poly sampler. So that just adds a little more dynamic variation to uh, me. So we've got the same sequence running all the time. Uh, we can update that by clicking or banging the random sequence to generate a new sequence, but I really would like that to happen uh, kind of automatically. So I will introduce a modulo function on the counter that's coming out there. And whenever we get to the downbeat of 128 beats, which is several bars of 16 note steps, then we will tell it to update the sequences. So that will start taking care of itself in a second. Okay, so that moves here, change our sequence. So I'll add one more part um, to uh, this, but we won't in this case actually use the, um, the sampler, but we will use the random sequencer again. Um, what we will do is send that out to an FM synthesis instrument for a kind of bass, bit of a bass line. Need to do the one offset for a pitched sound because we're not using the sampler. And um, change the gate to be a little bit less. And insert an additional gain object in here just to keep the balance okay. So that FN instrument can get added into the rest of our audio. Um, we can generate a sequence, but we need the values to change. We'll still do a 16-step sequence, but we will have a center new pitch of 36, and we'll go up and down an octave. So we can generate that, um, and then hook it up. Set it to automatically update as well. So at the moment our sequence is um, chromatic, so I'll just insert a quantization, pitch quantization. Sequence is generating sequences um, from time to time and continually playing those for each of the parts. We've got uh, samples selecting different percussion samples to trigger um, and a little bit of an FM synth bass. And we've done. So thanks very much. Uh, enjoy that and I'll see you in another video.